Hi everyone, my name is Maria and today I'm here to talk a little bit about the European Language Equality Project. I've been with Wikimedia Deutschland for the past couple of years. I have a lot of volunteer support experience and more recently I've um, been taking over more and more responsibility for bigger projects in the software development department. One of them being the European Language Equality Project. Maybe some of you who were at the Arctic Nut last year remember me uh, when I was ex talking about the exact project as well. And we're still trying and aiming to enable all European languages, regardless of the number of speakers, of the current presence of them in the on the internet, to achieve full digital equality by 2030. And we want the European Union and the European Commission to take action and support especially under resourced languages. Um, for this, um, 53 European organizations, which are consisting of language associations, universities, industry players, uh, community driven organizations like us, for all of them to come together. And by the end of the project, which um, is June 2022, to have a strategic agenda with some targeted action points and maybe even some focal points for funding. All of those organizations have been working on um, creating a rather comprehensive information basis of language reports, of deep dives, but also um, of other reports. And for all of this, to um, make up this roadmap and agenda for the European Commission. One big thing that we also want um, from this project is um, a big new funding program that is designed to actually help under-resourced small regional or minority languages in Europe. And we can also we can already show off some cool stuff that came out of this project. Uh, one of them being a report from the Wikimedia communities that we've been compiling. So we've been asking community members for their input on conferences through surveys, um, what kind of gaps and problems they see when working with their languages online, but also what kind of visions they have for the future. Maybe not surprising, <laughs> one reoccurring topic was the lack of open source material, which holds especially true for minority languages. But also um, a reoccurring issue was that uh, people would want um, more um, language experts and more people speaking those languages to contribute to their languages online, for example, through the language version Wikipedias of their own languages. Another um, cool outcome out of this is, a Euro is the European Language Grid, which is basically basically a platform that has all kinds of tools and technologies and services, uh, data sets, uh, which is a collection of all those things for um, different languages. And um, we can just have a peek at this real quick. So um, you can distinguish between um, language technologies, but also uh, data and resources and let's say community, which is projects and organizations. You can go through a catalog, you have some top categories. Um, for example, if you're looking for machine translation for a very specific language, you can do this here. Um, and you will have some search results uh, with the, the, the licenses and the languages tagged here. Um, so if you're interested in this, have a look um, and check it out. We also have the before mentioned language reports. Um, all of this is on the website. So if, you if you're interested in reading about uh, one specific language, you can do this. And actually those language reports were used to create a cool dashboard. So if you like data visua visualization, just <laughs> like I do, um, you can also check this out. We have a map where you can have a look where certain languages are the um, primary or secondary languages, but you can also have a uh, comparison between languages and the kind of uh, data sets and technologies available for this. And with this, I want to say thank you. Um, please reach out to me if you have any kind of feedback or questions and thank you for listening. <laughs>